Hey y'all, listen, we're running a little late tonight. A little technical difficulty, but we're here. Uh oh, what's going on? All right, but we're here. We're here tonight on Tercel Riley Live. So listen, if you're looking for Jihau Connect, we had technical difficulty with Jihau Connect. I'm going to find Jihau Connect and then uh, on my phone, phone and then I'm going to share it. Or I'm going to ask Apostle to find it on his phone and then hit share. So those of you that are looking for Jihau Connect, you should actually... Ooh, you should actually uh, be able to see it. So Apostle's going to find Jihau Connect on his phone, and then he's going to share it. I'm going to find um, um, it. Apostle, can I use your phone right quick? And I'm going to share um, from my phone, all right? Let's see. Here we go. Here we go. Let me hit that share button. There we go. Share now. All right, we're sharing there. Let me find now on Jihau Connect. Let me find us on Jihau Connect. And then I'm going to hit the share button. If I can find it. And then we're going to get ready to get started. Um, Apostles getting ready to lead us in scripture and prayer. Uh, those of you that are out there and you're already watching, we're going to ask you to go on ahead and... Um, Hit your share button. I see some of you are still waiting on me. Let me, because no one signed on yet. Let me just do a little something here to get us on. Um, again, remember we had technical difficulty and that's why we're starting late. So let me find this. Uh, Tercel Riley. Yep, there we go. And I am going to hit the share button. We're going to share now. So those of you that are waiting for Jihau Connect, you should see that share coming through now. All righty. Let us go on ahead. Hey, Donna. Good to see you watching. Good to see you watching. Good to have you on. Yep, there we go. All right, guys, let's come on in as we get ready to get started with our Bible study on tonight. All right, I think we're good now as far as sharing and as far as everybody being on. I think we're doing good. So we're going to give you a couple of minutes to go on ahead and hit the share button. Hey, Cousin Edna, good to see you watching. Hey, Rosie, good to see you watching. So we're going to ask you guys to come on and hit your share button. Um, remember, we're having a little technical dis difficulty with Jihau Connect. So Tercel Riley is it tonight. So if you would, go on ahead and hit your share button. Hey, Vermel, good to see you. Good to see you on tonight. Listen, we apologize, but we had some technical difficulty with Jihau Connect. So we're on Tercel Riley Tercel Riley. So go ahead and hit your share button. And once you hit your share button, you will share with your friends. And we're going to get ready to get started, to get started in a minute. Apostle Riley is here. He's going to come and he's going to greet you in a little while with scripture and prayer. And then I'm going to come back with the word for tonight. Good study on tonight. We bless the Lord. Remember, we're still talking about the Holy Spirit. And listen, if there's one thing that I need all of you to know that's watching, and those of you that will be watching later on, in this particular era, in this particular eon, what's an eon? Just a span of time. In this particular span of time, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Ghost more than we've ever needed him before. And that's what we're studying about. Before we can get him and experience the fullness, the fullness of God, we must know who the Holy Spirit is. We must learn how to commune and fellowship with him. So we're going to be talking about all of that tonight. Bless the Lord. Yes, we are. We're going to be talking about all of that. So go on ahead and call your friends. Uh, do whatever you need to do to get the word out. That Bible study, Wednesday night Bible study with Dr. Tercel J. Riley is on Facebook Live. It's on. Hey, Marcy, girl, I'd like to see you on. We're on Facebook Live, and we are going to be back with our study on the Holy Spirit very, very, very soon. All right, I'm going to turn the camera over to Apostle. Let's see. We're, oh, yeah, we're good and late. It's about 7.15. Apostle's going to take the camera now, and he's going to lead us 
in scripture and prayer, but first he'll greet you, and then he'll be back with scripture and prayer. Here is Apostle Ryan. Good evening, everyone. I pray, God, you've had a wonderful season since we last saw you, and I pray you had a great day today that all is going well according to what you desire in your life, and tonight I ask you to prepare yourself again, for we are prepared to bring a word forth unto you. Dr. Riley has studied, she's labored, and she is ready to give forth a word. And we're excited about what she's about to say. I heard a little bit of it, but I tell you what, I'm looking for even more. Um, I should say, you know, we had a little technical difficulty, but guess what? We're still back on track. I believe that when there's a little technical difficulty, that's a sign it's going to be a great word tonight. So you pray much for it. But at this time, we'll begin to read our scripture. So if you have your Bible, turn it around to the book of 1 John to get the first verse. First John, first verse, first chapter in the first verse. And it reads this way. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon in our hands of handle of the word of life. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declared we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This, then, is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie, and we do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Amen, amen, amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you now, God, for allowing us to be in this place at this time. We pray now and give you a thank for the Holy Spirit dwelling in us and around us, Father God, as we begin to move into your word, Lord. So we pray now, God, that you will bless those that have joined us tonight to hear the word of God. We pray, God, that they've entered into this circle with a teachable spirit. We thank you now, God, for anointed woman of God, ready to bring forth a word, God. So God, give a manifestation and revelation of the word, God, that's about to come forth. I pray now for the unction of the Holy Spirit to stand up on the inside of God, that she shall speak the word of God unto your people tonight. Now bless all tonight, Father, as we study your word. In Jesus' name we thank you. Give us understanding, God. Give us understanding. God, give us understanding of the word we hear tonight. In Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks. Now here's our teacher for the evening, the anointed vessel, Dr. Riley. Hey, guys. Good to see you once again. God bless you for all of you who are on. We praise God for you. Hey, Chiquita, good to see you. Good to see you. Donna, you got something out here that says not working. Um, give Apostle, give me a call on Apostle's phone, Donna, so we can find out what's not working. What's not working. All right, give, give Apostle a call. Uh, once again, it's good to see all of you that are on. We hope that everybody's on and watching. Um, let's see, I am looking on Facebook Live um, on my phone, and it looks like everything's working well. Everything's working well on my side. All right, do me a favor, guys, just so I'll know that you're hearing me and you're seeing me. If you are, shoot me some, some hearts or something to let me know that everybody's on and they can hear me and they can see me. Okay, do that for me. Um, so we can get very good, very good, very good. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. That's good. That, that lets me know that you're on. All right, let's get started with our study tonight. We've already lost a good bit of time, but we want to go on ahead and get started right now. Thank you, guys. Thank you so very much. Now, listen, we're talking about for our first time... Hey, Brother Simmons, thank you so very much. I see you. For our first-time watchers, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. We're studying on the Holy Spirit. And I want to bring this scripture back to your remembrance. 
which we're using as our background scripture. And remember this, our background scripture comes from Ezekiel 36 and 27. Ezekiel 36 and 27. So for those who say that the Holy Spirit was just for the New Testament, listen, Ezekiel tells us not so. Because in Ezekiel 36 and 27, the scripture reads this way. And I will put my spirit... <clears throat> excuse me, in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Now, this is God speaking to his people. And God is saying this, I've, he's going to put his spirit in us. And the spirit of God is going to move us to follow his decrees, his laws, his statutes, and to be careful to keep his law. So that's our background scripture. Now we talked about a whole lot of things prior to tonight's lesson. And I wish, um, y'all forgive me, my daughter's cooking and the smoke is overtaking me. I wish we could go back and talk about everything that we have studied thus far, but we can't because we don't have the time for that. And so we want to pick up now on what we left off with on last, on last Monday night. So on last Monday night, we were talking about, we ended our lesson with three specific things that the Holy Spirit gives, or he brings, or he brings. And those three things were what? There were truth, <coughs> comfort, and peace. That's truth, comfort, <coughs> excuse me, and peace, and peace. Those are the three specific characteristics of the Holy Spirit. Those things that he brings into our life. He brings all truth. He will guide us to all truth. He brings us comfort and he brings us peace. Now tonight, tonight we want to pick up with another subject. And we want to start tonight and picking up from where we left off. And remember what we said now, and this is very important. Remember this. The Holy Spirit is not an it, is not a thing. He is a person. He is a person. And we must see him <coughs> and know him as a person. Watch this now. The Holy Spirit must come into our lives as a person and not an experience. A person and not an experience. We have to get to know the Holy Spirit. And getting to know the Holy Spirit requires us to spend time with him. Allowing him to talk with us as we talk with him. <clears throat> Y'all forgive me, the smoke is really getting to me. <clears throat> and listen, allowing us to talk to him as he talks to us. One thing, one very thing that we must be very assured of is this. We must be assured about, can you just crack a window or something? Yeah, we totally must be know. very assured of the voice of the Spirit. The voice, knowing the voice of the Spirit is very, very important. You know, we say things like this. <clears throat> something told me that. Something told me that. But what we have to realize is that something is living on the inside of us. And that something that's living on the inside of us is the Holy Spirit. So we must learn how to give credit where credit is due. We must give that credit to the Holy Spirit. It is not a something. He is not a something. He is the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, and we must become confident, confident to his work and to his voice. Some things, sometimes things, things happen in our lives, and, and we'll say things like, I don't know why I went that way, but something just told me to go that way. I don't know why I'm doing this the way it do, what, the way I'm doing it, but something, hey Deborah, something, hey Terry, something just told me to do it that way. That is the Holy Spirit. Spirit working in and through us, and we must become sensitive to the voice of the Spirit. Listen, I'm telling you, it, we must just learn His voice. We must know the voice of the Holy Spirit. Listen, some things that happen in my life, and sometimes some things that the Holy Spirit leads me to do. Listen, I'll tell you in a minute, I'm not that smart. It must be the Spirit of the Lord that's on the inside of me 
me that leads, that's leading me and guiding me to that. Now watch this. I want you to know and be very, 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 very sure that the Holy Spirit does speak. Listen, the Holy Spirit speaks to our innermost part, y'all. Listen to me. Because sometimes, watch this, sometimes we might be listening for an audible voice. Listen, I've never heard the Lord audibly. I haven't. Many people have, but I have not. But listen, I know when the Spirit of God is speaking to me. I know when God is speaking because he speaks to my innermost being, my innermost being. And that's how the Holy Spirit will speak to us to our innermost being. Not only that, he speaks to us through dreams and vision. Be very mindful. Very mindful of the dreams that you may have, the dreams you may have, because the Holy Spirit will speak to you through your dreams, through your dreams, through your visions. Sometimes he speaks in a sermon. Sometimes he speaks in a song. Sometimes he may send prophecy your way, a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. Understand that that's how the Holy Spirit communicates with us. But we must become familiar with him. Now, let's make, let, let me make this statement. Let me make this statement that I've made before doing this study. Watch this. I need you to understand this so we can understand the move of the Holy Spirit. Watch this. God the Father, watch this, y'all. God the Father is in heaven. Jesus the Son is sitting on the right hand of the Father. But who is in the earth realm? The Holy Spirit, the Spirit. Spirit of God is in the earth realm. He is the promise. When Jesus was talking to his disciples and he said, boys, and I'm paraphrasing, it's expedient that I go. If I don't go, the promise won't come. The Holy Spirit is the promise. It's the promise. And we already read and saw in Ezekiel where God says he was going to send the spirit. We know that from Jeremiah. We know that from Isaiah where he said he was going to send Send his spirit. He was going to do a new thing in us. We know that from the book of Joel. This is that that Joel talked about. The Holy Spirit. He would come and he would indwell us. He would live on the inside of us. And one thing we have to know and understand is that if we're going to, if we're going to find out who he is in our life, if we're going to have relationship with him, if we're going to commune with him, we have to spend some time time with him. We have to spend some time with him. You know what? Watch this. I said this last week and I'll say it again. We we pray to God the Father. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, but we never pray to the Holy Spirit. Listen, sometimes we must learn how to pray, pray and talk to the Holy Spirit. I do it all the time. Let me tell you something. I misplaced $500 in cash in my house that someone gave to my sister. And I was holding it for my sister. Couldn't remember what I did with it, where I put it. Guess who I called on? I called on the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you got to lead me to this. Yep, I got the money to replace it, but lead me to it, Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit led me to it. That's how we have to learn how to commune with them. Holy Spirit, I need you to answer some things things for me. I need you to reveal some things. He is truly the revelator. He will reveal to us all the mysteries of God, those hidden mysteries of God. Guess who reveals them to us? The Holy Spirit. He becomes the revelator. Revelator. He is living on the inside of us. Listen, guys. Phantom this. Listen. Get this in your mind. Get this in your mind. In your mind that God Spirit lives in me. You know what that means? That a piece of God is living on the inside of me. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? I get that. 
Know ye not that your body, this body, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And he doesn't deal with the outward side of us. I don't care how cute you think you may be. I don't think how I don't care what you think you got going on. Holy Spirit don't deal with the outside. He deals with the innermost part of man. He deals with the what well, he deals with the heart, the cardia. That's what you call the heart in Greek. The cardia. He deals with the Cardia. Then he deals with the with the nephesh. The nephesh is another word for heart, and that means the soul of man. He deals with the inside of us. Yes, he does the innermost side of us, and we must get to know who the Holy Spirit is. Now, watch this. Now, there are some benefits. Watch this, and and we're just going to talk about a few tonight. There are some benefits. From having a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Benny Hinn wrote this book, Good Morning Holy Spirit. Excellent book. Excellent, excellent book. Others have written books about the Holy Spirit. Watch this. There are benefits for communion with the Holy Spirit. When we enter into a relationship with Him, there are benefits. The first and most, far most important thing, you can close the window now, huh? the first and far most important thing is what? He gives us victory over sin. That's the most important thing. Don't you know when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and we accept him as our spirit, as our savior, that does what? It quickens our spirit. That word quickened means to make alive. Before we got to that point, we were, listen, we were lost in sin. But when we got to the point where we realized that we wanted Jesus to be our savior and our Lord, and we believe that he was the son of God and he died on the cross and listen, we decided to accept him, guess what happened? That dead spirit that spirit that was lying dormant on the inside of us now all of a sudden it's been quickened. The Bible says if that same spirit which raised Jesus from the dead don't you know he will quicken your mortal body? That spirit on the inside of us but that was once dead, now now that spirit comes alive. Our spirit man comes alive. Listen, our spirit man comes alive on the inside of us. Now we have our spirit and the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. I told you this the other day as well. Listen, everything that pertains to God and man, guess where it happens at? It happens in the spirit of man because God doesn't deal with our flesh and God doesn't deal with our soul. Listen, let, let, me, let me help you there for just a minute because in our soul is our will, our, 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 our emotions, and our intellect. God doesn't deal with that. God deals with on the inside of our spirit. Spirit. That's where faith lies. That's where the fruit of the Spirit lies. That's where every seed that is in that fruit, patient, long-suffering, love, all of those things lie where? In the Spirit of man. And we're going to talk about how the Holy Spirit makes all of that, pull all of that together and make it all come together in one. Watch this. And so the first thing, that we, the first benefit, hmm. I'm talking kind of fast because we're almost out of time because we lost 15 minutes. But watch this, y'all. Let me slow down because I want you to understand this. The first benefit uh, uh, that the Holy Spirit provides uh, from a relationship and communion with him is victory over sin. He gives us the victory over sin. We are no longer, watch this, held captive to sin. What are you talking about, Elder Riley? Romans 8 and 2 helps us with this statement. Romans chapter 8 and verse 2 says this, for the law of the spirit of life, and we're going to talk about the spirit of life next Next week, it's one of the offices of the Spirit. Watch this. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. From the law of sin and death. Now walk with me on this. Because by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body. That's what the Holy Spirit helps us do. He helps us put to death. He helps us kill the flesh. He 
helps us kill those things that are not like God. The deeds of our flesh, we put those deeds of our body to death through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why he's so important. Don't ever think you can change yourself. Don't ever think that. You need the Holy Spirit operating and moving in your life. So by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, that's what we're talking about. You put the deeds of the body to death. When you put to, to death the deeds of the body, guess what? You force the sinful nature to submit to the spirit. Listen, understand this. Let me touch on the sinful nature for a minute. Because all of us were born with a sinful nature. When Adam sinned, every human being that came into the earth realm after Adam, guess what? Was born with a sinful nature. The only one that did not have that sinful, sinful nature was Jesus Christ. And why didn't Jesus Christ have it? Because he didn't come from natural conception. He didn't come into this world the way we came. He came through the ver through a version, watch this, by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was conceived in the womb of a uh, in the womb of a virgin by the power of the Holy Spirit. So he didn't come like you and I. So he didn't have tainted blood. Are you walking with me? He didn't have a sinful nature, but we have a sinful nature. And so watch this, y'all. When we begin to put to death the deeds of our flesh, the deeds of our body, Guess what happens? We force this sinful nature. We force this flesh to submit to the spirit. Oh, yes, we do. We force it to submit to the spirit. What do you say? Elder Riley, the way I used to lie, I don't lie no more. The way I used to cheat, I don't cheat no more. The way I used to fornicate, I don't do that no more. Why? Because I am forcing the deeds of the sinful nature, the deeds of the body. I'm forcing it to submit to the Holy Spirit, to submit to the Spirit of God that's on the inside of me. You better know how important the Spirit of God on the inside of you, how, how important he is in our lives. We need him like never before because Satan, Satan is going to come and he's going to show us some uh, some, some interesting things, uh, some things that we might we think we might want to try every once in a while. But if the Holy Spirit is alive in you, he will watch this. He will reveal those things of the devil. That's why we must have a discerning spirit. He will reveal those things of the devil and he will let us know those things are, that are not out of God. And even though we may even walk out of God's will for a little while, that's what the Holy Spirit is. He comes to bring conviction that we may turn around, watch this, and kill the deeds of the flesh and walk in holiness. Are you walking with me? That's why we must do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't ever think you can do it on your own. Don't ever think it is your ability or you have the ability to kill the flesh. No, you don't. It's the Spirit of God on the inside of you that allows you to put your flesh to death that allows you to kill the deeds of uh, the flesh. Oh, yes, it is. Remember what Paul says? Paul says, listen, when I would do good, evil is always present with me. That's right. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit. That's why we need him operating in our lives, uh, operating in our lives uh, day after day. Otherwise, watch this. This is good. I, I studied this as I was preparing. Watch this. If we don't allow the Holy Spirit to do it in our lives, we'll be just like the Pharisees that were spiritually proud. Oh, yes, they were. They were spiritually proud, but spiritually lost. The Pharisees was like, listen, I'm a Pharisee of all Pharisees. I do this and I do that. The scribes were, I know the word of God. I teach the word of God. Oh, yes, I do. They were spiritually proud, but spiritually dead. Don't be like the Pharisees. Don't be spiritually proud because you think you can do this thing on your own. No, you cannot. Don't be like the Pharisees. Listen, Galatians chapter 5, for those of you 
my scholars that are on. Mary, you ought to have seen your name out here tonight. Hey, Carol, listen, don't be like the Pharisees. Paul talked to the, to the church at Galatia in chapter 5. Paul said this to the church as, as in, uh, in Galatia, verses 16 and 17, chapter 5. Galatians 5, 16 and 17. Listen to what Paul says. This, this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit of God and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Listen to what he says in verse 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. Spirit and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Listen, listen, listen. They go, they walk contrary to one another, walk contrary to one another. The spirit against the flesh, the flesh against the spirit, but the spirit of God gives us victory over sin, so that we. We cannot do that thing that we would. Are you walking with me? I don't know about you. Let me just talk about me. I need the Spirit of God operating in my life every day, 24-7, seven, seven days a week, 12 months of the year. I need Him operating in my spirit. Spirit, in my spirit, so I cannot do the thing that I would do. You know what I'm talking about. I won't let the flesh overcome me, but I will be led by the spirit, by the spirit of God. Now watch this. I got some more good stuff for you because the other thing that the spirit of uh, the spirit of God does, uh, we talked about now how He gives us victory over sin, and there's a lot more we could say about that. But we're running out of time. So this uh, the next thing that the spirit of God did that God does is He reveals to us the mystery of God's word, the mysteries of God. Listen to me. We will never ever know everything that is to know about God until we get in the presence of God where he is in the heavenly realm. Then we can learn more and more and more and more about God. But while we're on this earth, we depend on his spirit, on the spirit of God to reveal to us the things of God. Yes, I don't know about you, but I want to know as much as I can find out about the God that we serve, the God that we serve, the God that we say we love with all of our heart and all of our soul. I want to know him. Paul said this, that, uh, uh, that, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and that I may identify with his suffering. I want to know who Jesus Jesus is. I want to know who God the Father is. I want to know who the Holy Spirit is. And so the Holy Spirit, he becomes the revelator. He, he's the one that reveals to us the deep things of God, the mysteries of God. He's the one that revealed to us our purpose in God. Oh, yes, he does. And the will of God for our lives. Yes, he is. That's why we have to learn how to communicate with him. We got to learn how to fellowship with him because listen, God's purpose and God's will is coming to us through the power of his spirit. Listen to this, uh, listen to this scripture, uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and chapter 10. Listen to what 1 Corinthians 2 and 10 says, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit for the spirit. Spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit, searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. He searches all things, the deep things of God, the mysteries of God. You ever wonder why you've read this chapter over and over, or you've read something in the Bible several times over and over, and all of us, all of a sudden, one time while you're studying, all of a sudden you was like, oh, that's what you mean, God. That's because the Holy Spirit just did something. He just revealed that word of God to you. He just revealed something to you that God wanted you to know and understand. That's what the Holy Spirit does. I don't know about you, but you know, I love talking about me. Listen, I've read stuff over and over and over and over again. I've read it and I said, listen, Holy Spirit, I don't understand this. 
please reveal to me what God is saying in his word. Because we have to understand it. We have to understand what God is saying to us in his word. And the Holy Spirit will come and he will reveal God's word because he is the revelator. Remember what Jesus told his disciples? He says, listen, he'll lead you to all truth. He'll bring back to your remembrance those things that I spoke to you. The Holy Spirit will bring back to our remembrance. Watch this now. In the time of need, just when we need to hear it, he will bring it back to our remembrance. Something we're going through, some situation or some circumstance that we're into, and all of a sudden we need a word from the Lord. The Holy Spirit will allow a scripture to rise up in our spirit. That's why it's so important, guys, it's so important that we know the word of God. Because listen, he can't bring back something to our, 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 our remembrance that we don't know. But yes, sometimes he does. Sometimes I, let me talk about me. Sometimes he takes me all the way out there, Habakkuk and Amos and all those other scriptures, because there's something in there that he wants me to see, and there's something in there that he wants us wants me to understand. Yeah, I've read it before, but I never understood it. I read it before, but I didn't remember it. And so the Holy Spirit, he comes to bring those things back to our remembrance. That's why the Word of God is so important. Because watch this, when I'm sick in my body, my body don't feel good, I don't feel good, I got pain in my knees and pain in my this and pain in my that, I don't need to hear Jesus died on the cross, you know what I need the Holy Spirit to do, listen, bring this scripture to my remembrance, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I'm already healed. Tell me the truth. When the doctor give me facts, I want truth from the Holy Spirit. The doctor may say, listen, you got this or you got that. But the truth of the matter is, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I am already healed. That's what I need to know. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He brings those things. Hmm. Back to our remembrance. Back to our remembrance. So that's another thing that the Holy Spirit does in our life. That's another benefit of the Holy Spirit. What's the first benefit? He helps us to have victory over sin. The next benefit, he reveals to us the mysteries of God's word. The deep things, yea, the deep things of God. 1 Corinthians 2 and 10. Then watch this now, because this is vitally important, especially for my teachers and my preachers and everybody that's online because it is the Holy Spirit that does what? Execute the anointing of God in our lives. Yes, it is. He executes the anointing in our lives. Remember what I told you earlier? I'm not that good. I'm not even this good to be here teaching this lesson to you. I'm not that good, but it is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit that executes the unction of God in our lives. Yes, it is. And what does that anointing do? What does that unction do? That unction, watch this, y'all, it equips us for service, equips us for service. You got to understand, for those of you who haven't walked in your call yet, because we all have a call. We all have a purpose. Remember our lessons on predestination and predetermination. God's already sent us with the call. And watch this. He, God will never send us to do something that he doesn't equip us for. That's why he sent the Holy Spirit. Listen, the disciples had to be equipped to start the church. Too much noise in the kitchen. The disciples had to be equipped to start the early church. They had to come, the Holy Spirit had to come and equip them for what they were getting ready to do. It's the same thing in our lives. The Holy Spirit comes, he comes to equip us for our service. Listen to 1 John. Mm -mm -mm. Listen to 1 John 2 and 27. Listen to it. It says this, But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. Abide in him. Well, who, who is the him? Who, who, who is the him? The him is the Holy Spirit. 
spirit. We must abide in him. We must abide in the spirit of God because he brings the unction, the anointed. Now let's clarify something here because some people might take this verse to believe that, listen, I don't need to study because the Holy Spirit will teach me all things. No, 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 no. He'll reveal to you all things. That's the teaching part of it. You know, which ye have received of him, abide in him, that, and you need not that any man should teach you. That doesn't mean that you don't need to be taught. That doesn't mean that you don't need to be uh, uh, in Bible study or in a teaching atmosphere. No, that's definitely not what it means. But what it means is that the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, he will lead you to all truth that relates to you and your purpose in God. Because that's what the anointing is for. Don't ever think, watch this, that the anointing is just for you, but it comes to edify the body. And so the Holy Spirit has to teach you where you need to go. I never get up and preach a sermon without asking the Holy Spirit what I need to preach. He knows who's going to be in the church. He knows who's going to be at the meeting. He knows who's going to be in Sunday school. He knows everything. He's God. He's all-knowing just like God. He's omnipotent. He's all-knowing just like God. Yes, he is. And he knows. And that's why we have to call on him. He will teach us what we need to know. That doesn't mean that you don't have to study. Don't ever get Get up there and try to preach without studying. Listen, don't get up there in Sunday school and try to teach without studying and say, you know what? When I stand up, the Holy Spirit will give me the words to speak. This is not what this scripture is talking about. So don't get that twisted. But he is the, listen, he will give us the anointing that we need to teach, to preach, to sing. I remember one time I was in the service and that's when I was just on the choir singing. I can sing now, but I wasn't singing under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I was just singing. And I remember I went to this church one time and, and my husband, he, he he tricked me. He told the pastor that I could sing. Right. And listen, listen, the pastor called me up to sing and listen, there was a celebrity in the, off, in the audience. Y'all, I was so scared. I was shaking at my knees and, and, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, pray that you sing under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. What? I don't know how to sing under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I was a young Christian back then just singing on the choir, loving it, singing on the choir. What you mean sing under the anointing of the Holy Ghost? I don't know that but I took the Spirit of God that I heard on the inside of me at his word and I said, Father allow me to sing under the power and anointing of the Holy Ghost. I sang like I never sang before. I closed my eyes and started singing. I don't know what I said. I don't know what happened. But when I got to the end of the song and I opened my eyes, people were laid out all on the floor. People were rejoicing and praising the Lord. You know why? Because it wasn't me, Terry. You know how we sang on that New Hope Choir. That wasn't me, Terry. That was the power of the Holy Ghost singing through me, singing through me. And when you allow the Holy Ghost to use you that way, you ask him, let me preach under the power of the Holy Ghost. Let me teach under the power of the Holy Ghost. Let me plan this program under the power of the Holy Ghost. Let me do this and do that under the power of the Holy Ghost. And watch the Holy Ghost come through. Watch the anointing begins to flow through you, flow out of your mouth, flow in your mind so you can plan things. He'll give you the wisdom that you need to plan what you need. That's what the Holy Ghost, Ghost does. And that's what God does for his people. He equips us for what we need to do. Oh, yes, he do. He equips us through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's another benefit. Y'all making me preach tonight. Oh my goodness, I'm almost out of time. But I don't want to get out of time before I say this one. Because this is good. This is good. I'm going to skip four. I'll do four next week. But I'm going to come to five. Because I want you to know and understand this. Number four was ministry growth and development. We sort of touched around that already. I'll come back and talk about that on next week. But I don't want to end this week. I got about six 
seven minutes left. I don't want to end this week without talking about number five, because number five is going to bless you. Listen to number five. The Holy Spirit, he adopts us. Watch this. He becomes our adoption agent into the body of Christ. Oh, I'm so glad. Mm. I am just so glad I've been adopted into the body of of Christ. Yes, I have. Listen to Romans chapter number 8, verse 14 and 16 uh, through 16. Watch what it says now. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. Listen to Romans 8, 14, 15, and 16. 14 says this, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Watch that. Now you what? Listen, if you're led by the Holy Spirit, you are what? A son of God. Watch 15. Watch 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Listen, the spirit of adoption, the Holy Spirit, he adopts us into the body of Christ. And now guess what? We are sons of God. Then listen to 16. I love 16. 16 says this. Watch this. The spirit Spirit itself, watch this, beareth witness with our spirit. I wish I could read all of your comments, but I can't. I see them rolling on the screen. Listen to what it says now. It says the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. Remember that spirit that I talked about that was lying dormant, that was lying dormant, and now he's become alive in us. Now the spirit of God communes with our spirit. God communes in us and through us, through his Holy Spirit, spirit to spirit. That's what we're talking about. Look at verse 16. It gives evidence and credence to that. Listen to what it says. It says, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Listen, you got to know who you are in the kingdom of God. You are a son. If you are led by the spirit of God, those that are led by the spirit for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You're a son. You're a daughter of God, the Most High God, the Creator and the Maker of all things. You're His son. You're His daughter. And when the Bible talks about son, watch this. There is, listen, there is no sexuality. There is there is no gender, that's the word I'm looking for, with God. We all are children of the Most High God. Whether male or female. We're children of God. We're the sons of God. And 16 says this, the spirit itself, talking about the Holy Spirit, bears witness mm, with our spirit that we are the children of God. And so we know now, without a spirit in doubt, who we are. We are children of the Most High God. You got to know and understand that, y'all. You got to let the devil know that. Oh, yes, you do. You got to let the devil know, listen, devil, I am a child of God. My spirit bears witness with the Holy Spirit about who I am. And I know who I am in the kingdom of God. I don't have identity crisis. I don't have bipolar, spiritual bi bipolar disorder. I don't have spiritual schizophrenia. No, I don't. I know who I am in the kingdom of God. And I am a child of God. Because my spirit and the Holy Spirit bear witness about who I am. Somebody ought to get excited right there. Hallelujah. If I was on the other side, I'd be sending up all those little stars and stuff because I'm excited about what God is saying to me tonight. You better know what God is saying. Now watch this. <laughs> I want to teach these last bullets and then we're going to be finished for tonight. Because watch this. I want you to understand this. The sons of God must be led by the Spirit of God. If you're going to fall in that category where you are a son of God, you must be led by the Spirit 
spirit. You cannot walk in the flesh. But understand this. Watch this now. Follow me carefully on this because I need you to understand this. Follow. Hey, Connie, I'm glad to see you. Been praying for you, girl. I'm glad to see you on. Watch this. Watch this now. So if you are led by the spirit, you're a son of God. But watch this now. Watch this. Being led by the spirit is not a precondition to being a son of God. That means being led by the spirit doesn't come before being a son of God. Follow me in this. Follow me what I'm, where I'm going with this. Let me say it again. Being led by the spirit is not a precondition to being a son of God. That means being a son of God is not predicated on, watch this, first of all, walking in the Spirit. Why? Teach this thing, Dr. Riley. Why? Because you must become a son first. You must become a son first. You must become a son of God first. And once you become a son of God, watch this, then the Spirit Spirit of God will lead you. Are you walking with me? You have to become a son first. Remember what, what, what Romans 8 and 15 says. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. That means that spirit that we were once in that kept us bound and captive to sin. We're no longer captive to sin anymore. Why? Because we got the benefit of, of the Holy Spirit. Spirit that does what? He helps us have victory over sin. So we're no longer a captive to sin anymore. Anymore. We don't have the spirit of fear. We're not bound up to sin, but we have received the spirit of adoption. The spirit of adoption does what? He makes me a son of God. Oh, yes, he does. He makes me a son of God. And now that I'm a son of God, now that I've accepted his son, Jesus Christ, Christ. Now that I'm his child, guess what? The spirit can lead me everywhere I need to go. He can lead me. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. Understand this, y'all. Listen, listen. The writer didn't say, Paul did not say, if you go to church, you're a son of God. No. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Once you become a, a son of God, he didn't say, if you go to church, you're a son of God. He didn't even say, if you read your Bible, you're a son of God. He doesn't say you're black, white, or Hispanic. You're a son of God. He didn't say if you take communion once a month or once a quarter, you're a son of God. That's not what he said. But sonship takes place when we allow the Holy Spirit Spirit to lead us now that we are no longer in bondage and now that we become a son he leads us the Holy Spirit leads us we're going to teach on sonship because let me tell you what sonship is you don't reach sonship until you reach maturity listen that is a good lesson we're going to talk about that there's a term called teleosis in the Greek and it talks about mature maturity maturity that's when you get to sonship. Listen, that's what the Bar Mitzvah was all about with the Jews. When their sons, their boys turned 13 years old, they walked in sonship. We're going to teach that one le lesson one time. But let's get back to the Spirit, Spirit of God, because we're out of time. We're out of time. But watch this. Let's end on this now. Let's end on this lesson. Let's end on this lesson. I need you to understand. Being led by the Spirit doesn't come first. It is not a precondition. The precondition is that you first become a son of God. First, you accept them as your Lord and your Savior. If somebody is out there that's listening, that's not saved, and you're wondering about this Holy Spirit we're talking about, the first thing you must do is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. That dormant spirit on the inside becomes alive in you, and then the Holy Spirit can do the work. Now he can begin to lead you. It doesn't matter how much you go to the church. That, that's, that doesn't cause him to lead you. How much you read your Bible, whether you're black or white, that does not make you a son of God. You must become a son of God, a son of God. 
then you can be led by the Holy Spirit. So how does the Holy Spirit lead us? He leads us by guiding us. He guides us where we need to go. He even guides us on what we need to read in our scripture. Ever, ever had this thing where all of a sudden hmm, you, uh, you hear a scripture in your spirit? That's the Holy Spirit leading you. That's the Holy Spirit guiding you. And then he draws us. He draws us closer unto God. He draws us closer unto God. He leads us to repentance. He leads us to truth. He leads us to love. He leads us to holiness. And then after holiness, y'all, he leads us to usefulness. Now he can use us. He can use us because now we find ourselves in a position where we're walking in holiness, being led by the Spirit of God. Too much noise in the kitchen. By the Spirit of God. All right? There are a couple of other benefits. We're going to touch on them next week, and we're going to move into the seven offices of the Holy Spirit. You're going to like that as we talk about office after office of the Holy Spirit and how it relates to our life and how it ties into our lives. You're going to love it. You're going to love that on next week. And that's where we're going to end that tonight. And we're going to start on next week. <clears throat> we're going to start on next week with the seven offices of the Holy Spirit. All right? All right. I hope you all enjoyed it tonight. You all got me a little upset like tonight pre teaching <laughs> preaching this word. If Sheila was online, she, there's something she would say. I forgot the word she used when she talked about teaching and preaching together. Anyway, we're studying the Holy Spirit because it is so vitally important, so, so vitally important that we know who the Holy Spirit is and that we develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit. We develop a relationship with him. We commune with him <clears throat> and he allows us to walk in, walk in and be led by him to be apostle apostle to be led by him to be led by him all right we thank you so much we love you lord we love you y'all we appreciate you remember at 810 and we're almost there at 810 we're going to actually start our prayer remember what god told me about two months ago now and I've been sharing it with you. And it has come to pass in my life, um, oh gosh, over the last couple of months. God told me to tell the people to come together right after Bible study. And let's pray for our children. Let's pray for our grandchildren. Let's pray for our family. Because the devil wants to destroy the family. If he could destroy the family, guess what? That's the greatest unit, the greatest institution that God created. He created the family. What God wanted Adam to do? Adam, God wanted Adam to be what? God with a small g. And he was to teach his children the ways of God. His children was to teach their children the ways of God and on and on and on through generations. So guess what? The devil came in and destroyed the family. Cain killed Abel. Then sin came all throughout the entire earth. And that's what the devil wants to do in these last days. He wants to destroy the family. And so I was in my shower, for those of you who haven't heard the story before, in my shower one morning and God spoke to me. And God said, listen, you start a prayer line right after you leave Bible study and tell the people to join that prayer line and come together and pray for their children, their grandchildren, their family unit, their nieces and their nephews, because the devil is going to come after our children and our grandchildren in the weakest way. Shortly after God told me that, watch this. My one, my 18-month-old granddaughter knocked unconscious. My six-year-old grandson, COVID. My 18-year-old, 18-month-old granddaughter, COVID. My three-month-old granddaughter, seizures. Because the devil wants to take our children and take their lives. And the most important thing he wants to do is interrupt us. Interrupt us from worshiping our God. Take our minds off of Bible study and off of prayer and on everything that's going on around us. So, 
Once we leave this line, we're going straight to the Bible, or we're going straight to the conference line, and we're going there, and we're going to come together, and we are going to pray. We're going to come together, and we're going to pray for our family and our loved ones. I'm trying to find the conference line now, the number, so I can give you the number. So if you want to join us... You can join us there. Apostle, can you get me the conference line number, please? Um, and so we're, so if you want to join us there, you can join us there on the conference line. All right. That's it for me tonight in Bible study. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope uh, you got something from it. Listen, keep the word of God in your heart. Hide it in your heart that you know what? The devil may come. He can't snatch it away and that you may not sin against God. Let us get ready for prayer. As always, if there's anybody out there that don't know Jesus Christ as your personal savior, get, uh, get to know him. Get to know him. It's simple. The only thing to do is you invite him into your life as your Lord, as your Savior. And he will come in your life. And he'll bring you to all truth. He'll lead you to repentance. He'll lead you where you need to go. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And you will become a son of God. And once you become the son of God, the Holy Spirit takes over and he leads you to all truth and to where you need to go. All right, let's get ready now. The conference line number is, for those of you that would like to join us for prayer, the conference line number is 716-427-1580. Again, if you would like to join us for prayer, we're praying for our family, our children, our grandchildren, our family unit, our nieces, our nephew. If you would like to join us, that number again is 716-427-1580. And the access code is 452-099 and the pound sign. Again, 452-099 and the pound sign. All right? Conference line number once again, 716-427-1580. Access code 452099 in the pond sign. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, our King, our Lord, our Redeemer, we thank you so much, God, for another opportunity to expound on your word. We thank you for these people, God, that joined us tonight on this Facebook Live, God, that we may study your word. Now, Father, we pray that you bless them, bless their homes, bless their family, bless their ministries, God, as they go forth and do, God, what you've called us to do in the earth realm. And Father, we'll be so forever grateful to give your name glory, to give you honor, and to give you praise. It's in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ that we ask these things and we count them all done. In Jesus' holy name we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. God bless you guys. I love you so much. Thank you so much for all your comments. I'll go back and I'll read them. I bless God for all of you, all of you that are on tonight. So good to see some of you. So good to see uh, uh, so good to see you, Terry. Bless you, bless you, bless you. I see uh, we have a pastor on, a minister on. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Carol. Um, Donna, I can't call all the names. Thank you so much, Cousin Edna. Thank you all for listening and watching. I love you, and I'll see you again on next week, Wednesday Night Bible Study with Dr. Tercel Riley and God's House of Worship. We'll see you soon. We'll see you then. God bless.